Okay, everyone, welcome once again to our continuation of Mediterranean Produce Spotlight. Taking a bit of a different spin for the month of May with this in our typical Produce Spotlight series and focusing on some different produce items that you may find in the Mediterranean diet. Now, there are some iconic ones, okay, that like um, I started off the month with olives, and I believe Charlotte did cherry tomatoes last week. So there are those iconic things that you see in the Mediterranean diet, but we wanted to highlight a few that maybe you wouldn't think of, but are totally appropriate in Mediterranean eating. And I am going to kick us off with that portion of it, but talking about mushrooms. Now, I'm not going to go crazy into talking about mushrooms because I believe that maybe both Jenna and Charlotte have chatted about them recently. But today we are specifically highlighting the portobello mushroom. And so I will give some talking points about that and how it's going to fit into our Mediterranean, excuse me, Mediterranean lifestyle today is talking about them in a portobello mushroom. This word is up for debate, right? Do you say gyro? Do you say gyro? Do you say something else? Um, let me know what you say in chat, but um, we're going to ch chat about them and why they are an excellent choice to include into the Mediterranean diet, okay? So I see a gyro. Okay, we'll we'll go with that. Gyro, gyro. Okay, it's all over the place. I will, for the sake of today, since so many of you have said it, will say gyro. Okay. All right. So I'm going to switch gears now. I'm going to turn this camera off, stop sharing my screen, and we're going to go over to our recipe, um, and go from there. So let me do that. Stop sharing and let me. See spotlight. Okay. All right. Can you guys see over here with all of these ingredients? And I have a couple of thumbs up. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Now you heard me say all of these ingredients and this recipe, I tell you guys just a little backstory. Okay. Let me give you a little backstory. We pick our classes that we um, do for you guys um, way in advance, like we're talking at least two months ago, maybe even longer. Um, and I'm usually very thorough with what recipe I pick and what I present to you guys to make sure that it's easy peasy and, and all of that. Well, today's recipe, I don't know what I was thinking, but it's a little bit more involved. Okay, so um, I, I am making some changes. I'm twisting it up, going a little um, off kilter with the recipe. So just know that, and I will send those notes along with my follow-up email. But this recipe is a little all over the place, okay? But that's okay, because I sometimes am a little all over the place. So it, it fits. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, some of you have commented about all the different ingredients that we have here, including a ton of spices, all right? So the recipe is on savory. I see you guys over there in chat. I will include it. Um, but I'm I'm changing the recipe just a pinch here and there. All right. So let's start with all these spices. We're going to be making a excuse me a gyro spice blend right now, um, and we're going to start off with some paprika. Now we're going to be making more of a blend than what we actually need in the recipe. Okay, so. Don't be looking at this and being like, oh my goodness, that's that's a lot going on. Um, because it is a lot going on, but we're not we're not using it all uh right now. Okay, that's why I'm gonna build mine in a little mason jar that I can have a lid and I can save it for another time. Okay, so starting off, we are going to do two and a quarter teaspoons of paprika. Okay, now. You guys know I do this sometimes. I'm using my half teaspoon. So I'm using it because I like that it fits into the spice thingamajigger and I just recount some things, okay? So we need two and a quarter. So I'm gonna do four of these and then a little extra. So just know that it is two and a quarter teaspoons, okay? So I have, oops, I'm already making a mess. 
Now I have my four and then my little extra, get my two and a quarter, okay? So there's that. I'll clean up my mess later. We got two and a quarter teaspoons of paprika in there. We now need a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic powder. So let me get this opened up here. Oops, sorry, I'm knocking the camera now. Okay, so just a quarter of a teaspoon of the garlic powder going in there. And then we are going to do a, oh man, um, we're gonna do, I'd love to see some of you also use a smaller, smaller one like this. We're gonna do a half teaspoon of cinnamon. So get that in there. Oh, I love cinnamon. Love the smell of it. It's going to be beautiful in this dish. Okay, so we got our paprika, our garlic powder, our cinnamon. Next, we have ground coriander. All right, so two, two, blah, blah, blah. I am so tongue-tied today, guys. We're going to do two um, teaspoons of the coriander. So I'm going to be doing four of my halves. And in, and there we go. Got our two teaspoons of the coriander. Next, we're going to be doing one teaspoon of turmeric. Okay, beautiful turmeric there. So one teaspoon of that. So I have two of these going in. Turmeric, of course, being a really warm, earthy flavor, beautiful color as well okay now the recipe at this point is also going to call if you you look down the list if you have it um, but you'll see it eventually it's going to call for some cardamom which i did not grab cardamom um it's a pricey spice okay it's not one that i use often so i decided to let it out of this recipe because it only calls for a quarter of a teaspoon um, and I'm, I'm fine with that. If you have it in your cabinet, go ahead and put it in there. Um, I see someone mentioning in chat, you need to update your spices. I recently did the same thing. So I think at one point I had cardamom and I recently threw it out um, because they do lose their flavor over time. So it's not one that I decided to add back in at this moment. Um, all right, let me get this cleaned up here. I just added a half a teaspoon of ginger okay that was that last one i put in there half a teaspoon of ginger now i'm just gonna take this and give it a mix i also could put the lid on my jar just give it a little shake which now that i have it started to be mixed i think i will do i love to make um jams and jellies and so i always have a ton of these jars laying around um, but it's a good investment for stuff like this too. Spice blends, salad dressings, all mixed up and ready to go. Sometimes you sub fennel for cardamom. That's a nice little touch. I like that. Okay, look at this beautiful blend we just made. Now, the gyros that we are making, there is no meat in them, okay? Today is produce spotlight. We're talking all about portobello mushrooms and that's what we're putting in. And we're going to be coating our mushrooms with this spice here in a bit. If you wanted to forego this part, I think that that's completely fine, okay? This is a um, vegan dish that we are making today. And so I believe that the highlight or the purpose behind this recipe is to note that vegan or vegetarian dishes can be very flavorful. And this is one way to make them that way. But I also think that the portobello mushroom can really sing on its own too. So if you didn't want to make this, you didn't have the spices on hand, I think that that's all right as well. Okay, totally up to you. But we have it now, and I think we'll be great on other things too. Okay, so let's put that aside. And it is an interesting variety of spices. Okay, um, in the recipe, you'll see that it's called tangine, T-A-N-G-I-N-E. This is not to be confused with tagine, T-A-J-I-N, that's been very trendy, um, like a Spanish or Mexican type spice blend to put on different things. The tangine that we're just making is actually 
probably more of a Moroccan um, type spice that you'll find. So um, yeah, just, just note that, but it is an interesting and fun blend. All right, we're gonna set it to the side for now and chat about our, oops, sorry, our star here, our portobello mushrooms. Let me bring them over for you guys to see, okay? Now, I have them laid different ways so you can see what we're gonna do and what we're talking about here. So the recipe calls for four portobello mushroom caps. If you're not familiar with the portobello mushrooms, they are the big ones that you can typically stuff with lots of ingredients or there's fun recipes out there to turn this into a little personal pizza. Um, so many cool things that you can do with mushrooms. I do love them, okay? So this is what it looks on the outside. These are ones that I have already cleaned, okay? I've removed the stem and this part of the portobello mushroom, which is called the gills, okay? This part right here. Now, um, you can eat these, all right? But a lot of people find the texture to be a little bit off-putting or whatnot. So for a lot of recipes, you'll see that you scrape them out. And that's what we're doing here today too, all right? So I'm gonna stack these up here so you guys can see how I got from this to this in case you've never done it before. We're gonna cut the stem off here. All right, and let me get my, my paper towel, smooth this over so that way we don't get the gills all over our cutting board for when we cut these. Okay, let's move those just a second here. So we took the stem out, and from there, now also mind you, I did wash and scrub these too, okay? From there, you can go and start to scrape these gills. Now, I am gonna just get the stem out a little bit further now that I've started it, okay? Go around, and now we've really popped that out, okay? Then you take your spoon, and work kind of from the inside down to the end of the cap. It scrapes really nicely that way. And what I like to do is go down like that and then do a little side swipe, okay? So down and then swipe over like this. Um, I see some of you say you never remove the gills. Uh, definitely to each their own. Um, I've heard some people say they keep them. Some people get rid of them. You like them, you don't. Totally a personal preference, but for today, we are going to remove them, okay? So once again, so scraping down and then around just to get the little bit of extra, okay? Keep going along here. Now, in terms of using mushrooms in a vegetarian or vegan dish, um, you can often see mushrooms being used instead of meat. Okay, and a big reason why is because mushrooms have the fifth sense or taste, um, sorry, the fifth taste, which is umami, okay? So um, umami gives you that like earthy, meaty, depth of flavor vibe. And that's why that they can make a great beet substitute. Now with that said, they're not gonna be providing us with a whole lot of protein, so we don't want to necessarily think of them as a meat substitute in that way, um, but they are going to give us that, that feel, that vibe, that taste. Now, um, nope, we're still retaining the nutrients when we scrape out the gills, okay? Put them back here. Um, what else was I going to say about that? We're going to go ahead and cut these mushrooms into slices. Okay, so I'm going to cut them in half this way and then just make slices like so, okay? Keep them intact a little bit um, for our gyro. Now your portobello mushrooms, if you've never had them before, since they are bigger, they have a little bit more time to develop flavor, okay? So their flavor is going to be a bit stronger than some other mushrooms because they aren't as watery, OK? 
okay, or diluted, so to speak, in the flavor department. So once again, they're packing the umami and they already have a good bit of flavor as um, they mature. Um, once again, keeping the gills or not keeping the gills is totally up to you. Um, they are sometimes removed because of, like I said, the taste and texture. You can do whatever you would like. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get our pan going, okay? So the recipe, this is also where I'm going a little off the recipe. The recipe calls to roast the mushrooms in the oven, okay, for about 12 to 15 minutes. I don't wanna wait that long, so I'm going to saute them. Um, so it does call though to use a quarter of a cup of melted plant-based butter. Whichever kind you would prefer, um, I'm going with the melt. Um, you guys, a lot of you know Kylene, one of the other dietitians on the team. She is very big into melt, loves the taste of it compared to others. Um, so that is what I've decided to use today. I myself have never tried it before, but I'm excited to do so. So I have a, a saute pan over here. I'm going to go ahead and put a quarter of a cup um, into my saute pan and just get that melted um, for our, um, our mushrooms, okay? So here it is inside, this is what we're looking like. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my pan and get that melted on medium heat so it's nice and good to go when we're done with our mushrooms, okay? Um, Sorry guys. Just grabbing another bowl here to put our um, chopped mushrooms in, okay? So that's melting. We're gonna keep chopping up our um, mushrooms here. And these, um, what is the main ingredient in melt? So it's a mixture of different oils, particularly there's coconut oil. Uh, and I will, let me, let me look here again. Um, so it's um, an organic oil blend, coconut, highlight, sunflower, sustainable, ethical palm fruit, water, sea salt, sunflower. Um, okay, those are gonna be the main ingredients there. So you can see here, um, it is cold pressed, no artificial flavors or ingredients, no lactose, gluten, or soy high in omega-3 and no cholesterol versus your dairy butters, all right? If anybody uses um, milk and would like to attest for it in chat, um, feel free to share, okay, while we keep chopping up our portobellos here. Okay. Keep going along. I see some of you mentioned that you stuff your portobellas. I would love to hear different things that you stuff it with. Um, I see someone says that your daughter loves milk. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to keep an eye on my fingers and your chats at the same time. Um, all right. Cut this one in half. We're almost there. And then these are only going to have to saute for a couple minutes. Like I said, compared to the directions, have them doing them roasting in the oven. Um, you're still using the melt butter if you're roasting them in the oven. Okay, that doesn't change. Just to keep that in mind. Oh, I see somebody puts crab in your mushrooms. That sounds delicious. Wouldn't work for the vibe that we're going for today, but I do love crab. Okay. This is a great plant forward recipe for sure. So if you're looking to include more recipes into your diet like that, I think that this can be a fun one to do that. All right. If you didn't want to use portobello mushrooms, you could totally use regular mushrooms. We carry some that are already pre-sliced. So there's lots of ways that you can tweak this and make this recipe your own, okay? however you want to go about it. My butter or my, should I say my melt is almost melted. 
And we are done with our mushrooms. Get them in there. Okay. Let me move this out of the way. And we'll bring this over here. Um, okay. Make sure that's good. Now, to um, our mushrooms here, okay, um, we're going to add our spices that we just made. So let me pan you guys over here. Move over a bit. Okay, you guys see my pan? Good. Okay, so I have these on medium. That's good and melted. Let's add our mushrooms, and then we will add our spices to it, toss them, and saute. So this beautiful spice blend that we made, we're going to put a teaspoon of that in there, okay? So once again, I have my half over here. So sprinkle that on, and another one, okay? And then the recipe is calling to also do a teaspoon of lemon pepper seasoning, too. So this is what I'm saying about we've got a lot going on, um, but I think it's fun. I think it's sometimes fun to have a lot going on if you have it on hand or you don't mind picking up the ingredients to do so. I love lemon pepper, so I am all for this. It's another teaspoon of this in there, too. Okay. All right. So we've got those two things in there. Let me get this here to start to saute them, mix this all around. Okay. I'm going to turn it up just a hair. Oh, this is smelling really good. I am getting the scent of those nice warm spices um, that we put in from the first batch. And then I'm getting some refreshing vibes from that nice lemon pepper that we just put in there too, okay? So just turned my heat up a little bit on this. And like I said, these only need to cook for about three to five minutes. How much of the warm spice blend did I put in? I put in um, one teaspoon, okay? It was two of my halves, if that kind of confuses you guys, I apologize. Um, but yes, it was one teaspoon of the spice blend that we made and then one teaspoon of the lemon pepper, okay? So while these are cooking here, let's start to build our gyro a bit. All right, so I'll try to have them kind of both on so you can see what's going on here. Let me get um, a plate, okay? So we have in stores, um, you can get regular gyro, you can get pita, um, the, sorry, I say, I'm saying gyro, and I know you guys told me said to say gyro, I apologize. <laughs> um, so, um, we are going to use today these Greek lifestyle original flatbreads. Um, you could also, like I said, use the pita. You could use the gyro bread that um, we have. But I like these flatbreads because there's a bit, as it says here, a bit more protein, less carbs, less added sugar, and therefore all around less calories. These are found in where you would find the bread. They're usually at the end of the bread section. Um, so... We are going to get one of those out here. Okay, here we go. Looks good already. I'm excited about this. And we'll start putting some toppings in here. So when our mushrooms are done, we are good to go. Thank you for the compliments on the plate. I am also a big fan. <laughs> okay, so we are going to layer some ingredients in here, starting with hummus. Recipe calls for regular original hummus. I am all about the roasted red pepper. We have lots of other great flavors. If you were on with me earlier this month when I did olives, we have the Mediterranean olive one. 
Um, so many good options with the hummus. Hold on, I gotta get it open here. Um, but this is my go-to. Okay. Get this open and I'll come back over for you guys to see. Just a moment here. There we go. Our mushrooms are looking good too. I'm just gonna give them about another minute. Okay, here is our hummus. Okay, just gonna give it a little bit of a stir so those red peppers get in there. And then however much hummus that you wanna put on your gyro, okay. I love to put hummus I don't know if I told you guys this. I love to put hummus on my BLT. Oh, I'm so excited for BLT season for sure. Okay. Get this all spread around. Another go. I like to get nice to the edges, right? Like so. Okay. So. There we've got our hummus on there. Now um, I am going to add some romaine lettuce. What can you use in place of the hummus? You could do some Greek yogurt on there or um, a Greek tzatziki sauce if you would prefer over the hummus. That that's kind of the iconic thing to put into a Hero is a tzatziki. Okay, gonna add some nice greenery here. Good. A little more. Okay, gonna turn down my mushrooms, but they are looking great. Okay. All right. Turn those on low. Done with that. Now, um, if you hang with us on Coffee Chat, we talk a lot about these Wild Wonders tomatoes. Um, they're on sale often. I love them. So I'm going to rinse a couple of those off to put in with our, our uh, hero here. Okay. All right. Let me cut those just a minute. Okay, you could do regular tomato slices, I believe is what the recipe calls for, but like I said, I'm going way off base here with my recipe, and it's just to show that you really can do your own thing, okay? Slices would work just fine in here too, but I like the pop of cherry tomatoes. Okay, so those are in there, and... Um, I know we're almost at time, so if you need to go, totally understand, and it's fine. But let's put our main star on here, and that is our mushrooms. Oh, it looks good. It looks so good. It smells good. Let me move that guy out of the way here. Okay. I'm going to put one little bit. Yep. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we got that in there. Made a bit of a mess per my usual. Okay. And then we're going to top it off with some feta. I love feta. This is the BioLife 100% vegan feta I've never had before, but I love feta. So I'm going to give it a go. Try it here. You can see here, free from dairy, soy, gluten, lactose, nuts and preservatives. I think I saw some of you mention at the beginning that you like BioLife products. So if there's some other ones that you want to talk about, please feel free to do so. My hands are wet, so I'm struggling to open this. But it does indicate that there's an easy open here. So give me a moment <laughs> um, to get this open. Grab my hands and try again. You know, I could just cut it open too. 
Okay, here we go. Going in with the knife because I can't get it open. Sorry, guys. Okay. Oh. oh, it looks very nice. Okay, dump some water out. Hold on, I'll put you guys in a minute. Okay, here we go. Beautiful. Let me, I am just going to grab a little hunk off here and just kind of crumble it like a feta usually would. Okay. Right on top. It's creamy. So a little more because you can't have enough feta, right? Perfect. Okay. Let me rinse my hands off. Okay. So here we go, guys. Let me bring this back up. Um, I'm going to turn my video on here, and then you guys can see this a little bit better. Okay, so we have this. Looking good, looking yummy. I'm excited to try it. You could just eat it like this, like open face, or we could close it. I can take a bite of it, see how it is. It looks good, but... All right, I'll make a mess if I do this on camera, so I probably shouldn't, but I'm excited. Here, let me at least try one of the mushrooms. Wow. That has so much flavor. The mushrooms are so good. So good. Okay, I'm excited to dive into this. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging with me today. I really appreciate it. Let me know if you try this recipe. I will send my changes and notes um, when I send out the recipe later. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And your week is supposed to be so nice out there, right? So um, let me know if you had any questions. And um, I'll try to get back to you. Okay? Thanks, guys. Bye.